Oh, holidays. Did you know that the average person between October 31st and January 1st gains about eight pounds? Well, it's true. And why wouldn't it be? There's holiday parties. There's special treats at your office. There's that crazy pumpkin pie with six gallons of half and half that someone brought to the Thanksgiving dinner. There's just so many ways that we consume extra amounts of food. Plus, there's the stress. And that can often make us eat a little bit more than we want to or to make different kinds of choices simply because we're in situations where we are feeling uncomfortable. But holidays don't have to necessarily be all about letting go of all the healthy habits that we have throughout the next the whole year. Holidays also do not have to be about depriving yourself of your grandma's famous pecan pie. Oh, because that's so good. It's so delicious. Oh. Pecans. I can't get enough of them. But there are some strategies that we can offer that might make this holiday a little bit healthier. Okay, how about point one? Balanced meals. Whew. When you are faced with a day where you are heading towards a big holiday party, it is really easy to not eat all day, even if you were told that intermittent fasting might be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but you're saving up for the big event, so I'm not going to eat anything all day long. This can be a huge mistake and can convince the brain that you need to eat every single thing in sight, including your computer and the tables and the chairs and the mats and the napkins that are on the table when you finally sit down to eat. So eating a balanced meal and several balanced meals throughout the day before the big night is really going to help. When we say balanced meals, we're talking about sufficient amounts of complex carbohydrates, those high fiber foods, a protein, and some kind of fat. If you're getting those at your meal times, maybe your breakfast and your lunch, you are less likely to overdo it at that holiday feast that might be coming towards you um, in the evening hours. So get your balanced meals in, and that will usually help to satiate you so you don't overdo it. You said some kind of fat. I'll bet you have maybe some sort of preference about those fats. No? You're so wise. <laughs> yes. Yes, of course, all fats are not always the same. But when I talk about healthy fats, that might be those pecans I was talking about. Oh, that's so Ooh, good. The pecan pie. Perhaps walnuts, perhaps some almonds, nuts, seeds, olive oil, olives, avocados. Um, those are the kinds of um, healthy fats that we're talking about. And you might find them in other dishes that you might be eating as well as part of other foods, perhaps a piece of fish or perhaps um, you know something that you that you join together with an, another oil or or, uh, or or seed or nut butter that was in another part of your meal. Point number two: focus on plant protein. That's right. Plant-based proteins, aka veggie-based proteins, aka vegetarian food, can be a wonderful part of a satisfying meal. So if you are going to an event or a party or you are hosting a meal, having a plant-based protein can really help to satiate and satisfy. That is because plant-based proteins are often very, very high in the fiber category mm. and fiber expands in your belly and makes you feel full. So if you are planning on hosting or bringing a dish, make it a bean dish. Perhaps it's a lentil soup. Perhaps it's a bean dip. Perhaps it's a chili. But something that really will make you feel satiated and heartily full is a great plan for adding to your meal. Yeah, I was thinking about a bean chili with Ooh. corn and maybe some of the peppers in mm. there. And, oh, delicious. Oh, it's kind of spicy. Yeah. Walnut chili, that's a new one. Um, if you want that recipe, I can send it to you. It's a, it's a pinch of yum or something like that. It's absolutely fantastic. It's made with walnuts and beans. Huh. Yeah. Walnut chili. I, I, I don't think I've heard of that well, one yet. Well, you have now. Gosh, I have. Mary, you never cease to amaze. I try. <laughs> Point number three. Take advantage of natural sweetness. Yes. All the sweets that we love and hold dear to our hearts at this holiday season, we can often find in a naturally delicious and healthy form. So we usually are seeking out the treats and the, and the candies and the peppermint hot chocolates. Um, it is very, it's a great idea to begin to seek out natural forms of sweetness. And sometimes that can come in the form of vegetables, like this gorgeous delicata squash and this luscious little sweet potato. These are naturally sweet. So is pumpkin. So is 
Onion, yes, onions are sweet. When we are cooking and baking with these kinds of foods, we can elicit the natural sweetness that comes from these vegetables and satiate that sweet craving that we often have at this time of year. Additionally, cook and prepare foods with naturally sweet fruits as well. The pomegranate is in season. Is this mm. the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? Oh, it's beautiful. Don't you just feel like you're in the Garden of Eden just looking at it? Yeah, it looks like it looks like those beautiful colors changing outside. Yeah, it's like it's it's reflective of the season. It sure is. Or things like figs. You know, make something like like roast a couple of nuts, stuff them into a fig or a date, roll that thing in some coconut. You've got the most delicious dessert you've ever heard of. And you don't need to be munching on a candy cane to get that same kind of sweet hit. Have you used molasses lately? Have you baked a gingerbread cookie using molasses instead of this, uh, the same old refined sugar that's, um, that sometimes is not as healthy for your, your body and your blood sugar? Experiment. See how it might be to turned to natural sources of sweetness during this holiday season. Your palate and your tummy will not regret it. Oh, I love sweet things. I do too. They're so sweet. <laughs> I don't think of <laughs> onions being sweet. But they are. They well, are natural. Think of caramelized just, onion. Will you t take a bite of that and just let me, let me know if that's... <gasps> mm, so <laughs> sweet. Raw onion, probably not. But cooked onion. When you bake... A sweet potato, when these two get together in the oh. oven, oh, that's some sweetness right there. Oh, we should do that tonight. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Here are these little friends, and there's they are married for life with a very, very positive and happy, healthy relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Point, number, Point four. number four. Make your drinks more festive. Yes! It's very easy to engage in festive drinking throughout the holidays, and that very often includes things like pumpkin spice lattes and three glasses of champagne and a hot toddy. Um, so those can really add up calorically. And one thing that I love to recommend is, especially when we think about the cold, people don't think about being thirsty, but in fact, it's very easy to get dehydrated during these winter months mm. because you are, in fact, losing fluids just by exhaling and because of the temperature of the air. So it's great to replenish your hydration with fluids that are low calorie. So throw some pomegranate seeds or some pomegranate juice into some seltzer or make your own hot chocolate, but not with all of the extra froth and half and half. Make it with some fair trade baking soda or this is baking soda. Really, this is baking cocoa. <laughs> Definitely do not make a drink with baking soda. That will be, unless you've got a horrible case of heartburn where that's nothing, nothing else is helping. But your own hot chocolate with a little bit of cocoa and perhaps a touch of cinnamon and perhaps a little bit of sweet and natural almond milk made with vanilla. This can be a wonderful beverage that feels like you're having a warm holiday celebration in your mouth, but is much lower in calories and much healthier. So experiment with festive drinks, but they don't necessarily have to be 300 extra calories of frothing latte in a Starbucks mug. There you go. Ooh, ooh, defamation going on. I didn't defame. I just made, I just said facts. That is true. That is true. You know, we had a recent uh, herbal tea episode mm. and that you, we had so many interesting and, you know, tantalizing uh, herbal teas and just hearing you talk about this makes me feel like we could do a whole episode on other fun drinks oh, that we could make so many I mean like your, you chakam drinking... your chakamaka latte my chakamaka latte and if you're interested in that and actually I my famous drink uh, in the winter time which I can't believe I didn't even mention is kaya sinna chakamaka latte <laughs> oh, say, say that three times I was gonna ask you to do that kaya sinna chakamaka latte three times kaya sinna maka chaka latte I think I said it backwards, but that includes cayenne pepper. Yes, it does. Uh, cinnamon. Yes, sirree. Uh, chocolate, cocoa powder, not to be confused with baking soda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maca, which is a, a powder of a, of a root of a tuber, which is quite delicious and malty. Anyway, mix it with a little almond milk and throw some honey in there and you're, you're pretty happy. I'm going to have that with my pecan pie. Ooh. Point number five. Point number five, eat mindfully. Here's where I come to that pecan pie. 
One of the best things you can do this holiday season when it comes to healthy eating is to eat with intention and to eat with a sense of mindfulness. When we eat mindfully, it sounds counterintuitive, but we eat less food. When we truly enjoy that piece of grandma's pecan pie. Oh, yeah. So good. We tend to eat less of it because we are allowing the flavor and the experience of eating that food really to land. So eat mindfully. It's so easy to go to a buffet and start shoving every single thing into your mouth because it looks so good or because it's kind of an uncomfortable situation. But when we eat with intention, we eat more slowly, our brain gets the message that we're full, we're chewing, we're metabolizing, our body is is burning those calories more effectively. You can set your body up for success and still enjoy those favorite treats during the holiday when you eat them with a sense of mindfulness. So enjoy your holiday eating treats and be well. (laughs) It is now time for the Q&A about holiday feasting and other holiday survival tips. (laughs) So feel free to drop a question in the chat. You need to be logged on to Facebook if you're not already to do that. And I will start with some questions. You know, that speaking of points that we could do a whole episode on, I think mindful eating is something that we could probably do a whole episode on because hearing you talk in in our regular life and just... (laughs) Like over breakfast while we eat mindfully. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and just hear you, hearing you now, I, I am constantly reminded of the level of emotion mm. that comes into eating. It's not just the functional, I'm hungry, now I eat, but there's there's emotional stuff that gets in there. That is so uh, right on target, and especially during the holidays, which can be an extraordinarily emotional time for us. And that can be a happy emotion, a sad emotion, a frustrated emotion, an overwhelming emotion but food is emotional. And so when we take a few moments to either engage in a, a, a sense of gratitude about our food or a sense of just engagement with our how we're experiencing the tasting of the food or experiencing the fullness or hunger that we, that we experience in our bodies, um, that mindfulness really brings a whole new level of enjoyment to the food and also just awareness of how much you actually need or don't need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let me ask you this. Please. What is, speaking of taking advantage of your natural sweetness. Aw, shucks. <laughs> I take advantage You're of that so... all the time. <laughs> do, you, do you actually have, do you have a favorite holiday dessert that if you were going to a party and someone said, bring a dessert, please, for this holiday party, what would you bring? I made a fantastic chocolate ganache uh, last year, which I think was made with this. It was totally um, gluten-free, dairy-free, animal-free. It was so luscious and delicious. Um, And I think I would make something like that. Or or I would make uh, these great little balls called pecan date bonbons. Oh, there's the pecans again. There are those pecans. They keep on showing up. But these are wonderful little balls of goodness uh, that were created originally by Cynthia Lair, who wrote Feeding the Whole Family. And they are pecans with a touch of cinnamon and I believe uh, dates and perhaps a little bit of miso paste just to give it a little hint of saltiness. Uh, There may be something else in there I can't remember, but mashing all those ingredients up after you've toasted the pecans into little balls of goodness and bringing them, perhaps putting them in the refrigerator first just to harden them a little bit. Um, Those always are very, very well received. Okay, that sounds good. If you want the recipe, let us know. I might invite you to a holiday party so Ooh. I can so I can get those. I'm gonna bring the pecan date bonbons and my Kaya Sinachaka Makalate. <laughs> 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 What's up with tryptophan? Tryptophan? Yes. That <laughs> Tryptophan is an amino acid that's found in Turkey, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's very little evidence to show that that actually does anything. Oh, really? Yeah, unfortunately. They, they talk about they that all say, the time, making you sleepy. and They say. Yeah. I, I think it's not the tryptophan. I think it's probably the, uh, the carbohydrate-induced coma that many people have <laughs> after uh, a big uh, meal. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, the stress of sometimes being with people that you are afraid of. 
talking to. <laughs> That's a whole other episode. That's my psychiatrist friend who's going to be doing that. I one. want to hear about your Thanksgivings. <laughs> now, Mary, it's for the it's time for the recap of Main Course Part Two. Recap of Main Course Part Two: Healthy Holiday Eating Tips. Is important to have balanced meals so you don't overeat, to include some kind of a vegetarian plant-based protein, to enjoy the natural sweetness of foods like fruits and vegetables, and to enjoy non-caloric but still delicious drinks and to eat and drink them mindfully. That's it. And now for the weekly nutrition challenge. I challenge you, my friends out there. It is November currently. I challenge you to find a goal for yourself for the holiday season. Maybe it's to eat one sweet a day. Maybe it's to increase vegetarian sources of protein. Maybe it's to try out a squash. But make one goal for yourself for the holiday and see if you can stick with it. And please let us know what that goal is. We want to know and we want to support you. Let us support you. We would love to hear about that. We, hey, if you appreciate the show, you can help us by leaving that comment or question about your goal, or maybe a question came up around what Mary was talking about, or you might even have some other ideas about healthy holiday eating. You might have some other ideas about intermittent fasting, some other information that Mary didn't provide. So um, feel free to chime in on that and let us know if there's anything else you'd like Mary to clarify. And yes. you want to know more about Mary or the show, you can go to marypurdy.co. That's M-A-R-Y-P-U-R-D-Y dot C-O. <laughs> thank you for joining us today, and thank you for joining the conversation. Mary, thanks for all that information. Please, thank you. Let's go have a Kaya Sin on Chacamaca Latte. With pecan pie. Ooh. We have nutrition edutainment coming to you weekly, but the live show currently is only two times per month. It's the first and third Monday of every month at 6 p.m. Pacific. Our next live show is on Monday, November 20th. You'll definitely want to join us then. And why, Mary? Because we are going to be talking about the latest in bars and out-of-the-box creative snacks. Ooh. Don't miss it. Okay, we'll see you next time. Let's roll the credits. There might be giveaways. (laughs) This show was produced by Keith Hitchcock and Hocus Focus Media. This show is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. It is not intended to replace or substitute professional health advice or care and should not be used for diagnosing or treating a health problem or disease. Please consult your physician or registered dietitian before following any advice contained here. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have learned a associated with this show. The opinions expressed on this show are those exclusively of Mary Purdy, the show's staff and guests, and do not necessarily represent the views or policies of Aravel, Bastier, dietitians in integrative and functional medicine, or other entities. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.